The Equitable Life Assurance Society presents This is Your FBI. This is Your FBI, the official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Presented transcribed as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. A shrewd psychologist who has had contacts with numerous leaders of American business once remarked, Success and self-confidence go hand in hand. Men who have a strong conviction that they are going to succeed are the ones that rise to the top in every field. For people of this type, people who have this feeling of certainty about themselves, the Equitable Life Assurance Society has created its famous life insurance plan for men and women on the way up. Do those words describe you? Then you'll be interested in about 14 minutes when I give full details of the Equitable Plan for men and women on the way up. Tonight, the subject of our FBI file, Kidnapping. It's titled, The Soybean Shakedown. In tonight's case from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, you will meet two typical American racketeers. For a quick lesson in crime prevention, let's take a brief look at the backgrounds of these two hoodlums. By what is not an odd coincidence, both men grew up in what are known to social workers as broken homes, in homes which had been deserted by the father. During the critical years of adolescence, Every growing boy needs what psychologists call an ego ideal. In other words, a grown man on whom he can pattern his conduct. Someone to admire and hero worship. With no father to play this role in his life, a youth is always in greater danger of falling under corrupting influences. This is the real tragedy of divorce. This is what every father in tonight's audience who may be thinking of divorce should bear in mind. The loss of one parent during a child's youth may mean the difference between good citizenship and delinquency. To be sure, not all children from broken homes go wrong, but it is a fact that a broken home is often a major factor in delinquency. Your FBI invites you to see what two products of such broken homes can develop into when they reach adult years. Tonight's file opens outside the small shack that serves as the railroad station in a Midwestern farming town. A lone man stands on the platform watching the noon train from the city arrive. A woman and a young boy get off one of the forward cars. The boy looks around and says, Mom, there's Uncle George. He sees his buddy. Oh, my bones rough. I left them on it. No, I've got them. Oh, well. Hello. <laughs> Hello, Uncle George. Good oh, to dear. see you. <laughs> Hello, buddy. Hi, Uncle George. Look, I can throw a curve. Here, you take the glove, oh, and I'll go no down there and No ball playing until we get to the farm now. Oh, Mom. The uh, truck's down this way. Uh, I'll carry the small bag. I've got them both. Thank you. What do you hear from Tom? I had a letter just before we left. Pop's a sergeant now. He's got his own platoon. Good for him. They go out at night with guns and... <laughs> All right, buddy. Did he know about you moving up here with me? Mm-hmm. I wrote him right after you called. You know how far it is to Korea? 7,850 miles. I looked it up in my geography. Quite a piece. Uncle George... Did you ever run into Neil York? Who? Neil York. He went to school with Tom. I think the last we heard, he was on the state police. I can't say I remember him. Uncle George. What? Is that your truck? Uh-huh. Boy, that's keen. Newest thing on the road. I'm in here, Alice. Oh, thanks. 
and I sit in the middle? Sure, go ahead, sir. Thanks. Uncle George, is that a note for you? Uh, note? Where? On your windshield. It says, get rid of the truck. No more warnings. Oh, that's some, some kids playing a joke. Let's get out to the farm and have some dinner. Bossy's milk and the barn's cleaned up. Can I drive the track now, buddy? Well, now, you better go easy, boy. You've been milking Bossy like she's a fountain. And you'll have that field so dug up with... Then can I pick some hay? <laughs> sure. Thanks. Alice, does that boy ever just plain walk? No, he can help it. <laughs> Visitor? Looks that way. Who are they? A couple of men from town. Morning, Mr. Wayne. I've told you before to keep off my property. You drove into town again yesterday. That's right. We left a note on your windshield. I saw it. What's all this? Yeah, keep out of it, Alice. Say, Mr. Wayne, you want a tip? Not from you two. Don't move another load of beans to the city unless it's in one of our trucks. We've seen lots of them turn over lately. Oh. You men, get out of here. Go on. Okay. Just remember, this is a final one. Come on, Blackie. Okay. Uncle George, what are they talking about? There's nothing to fret over. I can handle it. Hi, Roy. Huh? Oh, oh, hello, Borange. Roy, me and Blackie got problems. Uh, well, I'd rather you didn't bring them here. It's important. We had to talk to you, Roy. What's with them clippers? Uh, they're used to prune roses. Well, now, what's your problem? Uh, collections have been pretty good. I guess you know that. Mm-hmm. Well, could be better. Well, they would be. But I can't get all the farmers to join. For example, there's a guy named Wayne over on the turnpike. He doesn't want to... Eddie, Eddie, don't come to me with every little thing. Yeah, but you said to see you... If I wanted to be bothered with details, I'd be running the company myself. I brought you two out here so that I could take things easy. You're getting 25% of the take? Well, earn it. Solve your own deals. Run it like a regular business. Get tough. They'll join. Cripple a few of them if you have to. Just bring in the receipts. Now, do you understand? Yeah. Oh, uh, hand me that ball of twine, will you? Some of these roses need a little support. A few hours later, Alice Dawson is at the nearby state police barracks being greeted by Trooper Neil York. Hey, Alice, it's good to see you again. Oh, thanks, Neil. Come on over and sit down. What do you hear from Tom? Oh, he's fine. Here we are. Thanks. I guess young Buddy's an old man by now. Uh, twelve. Well, what a twelve. <laughs> yeah, you should have brought him along. I almost did. But, well, Neil, this isn't altogether a social visit. Oh? You remember Bud's Uncle George? Just about. Uh, his name's Payne or... Wayne. George Wayne. Yeah, that's right. Well, what about him? He's in trouble, Neil. What kind? Well, I'm not sure myself, but I'll tell you what I know. All right. Uncle George met me at the train last week, and I found a note on his truck telling him to get rid of it. Go on. And this morning, two men came to the farm. They threatened to kill him if he drove another load of beans into the city. Now, I'm not sure of their names, Eddie but... Powell and Blackie Grant. Who are they? Racketeers. We've got an outfit called the Southern County Produce Company that rents trucks. We've gotten pretty near every soybean farmer around here to hire their vehicles. Why? Well, at first, it's a good deal for the farmers. They rent the trucks cheaper than they can run their own. After one month, though, Powell raises the rates. Well, why don't the farmers drive their own trucks? Well, a few tried, but they had bad accidents right afterwards. 
You know about it, and you're letting it go on. Alice, we're so short of men, we have trouble handling traffic. Somebody must be able to do something. Maybe you can. Me? So far, not a single farmer has been willing to testify about this coercion. Can you get Uncle George to sign a statement for us? I'll try. What do you want him to say? Exactly what you told me. I'm going into town this afternoon to see a friend of mine at the FBI. Get that down on paper and they'll have a case. Just washing up. Why? It's not time to eat. I know, but I'm getting set to drive to town. Can I go along? Uh, no, sir. Aww. One thing your mother's done around here, and that's keep clean towels Hello. in it. Oh, hi, Mom. We're in the kitchen. I'm sorry I'm so late getting back. That's all right. I'll get dinner started in a few minutes. Skip me, Alice. I'm going to town. Oh? Buddy, dear. Yes, Mom? I'll need some milk for dinner. How about you visiting Bossy? Sure, Mom. And take a look at the chickens while you're out there. I will. Uncle George, you can't drive into the city. Why not? It's too dangerous. Now, Alice, you're scared because of those punks. They're who not came... punks. Eddie Powell and Blackie Grant are racketeers. Who told you their names? Tom's friend on the state police. I went to see him today. You didn't talk about me. Yes, George, I did. Now, why do you want to go and do that? Because the best way to fight men like that is through the police. Uh, why don't the police stop them before now? Because no farmer in the valley will stand up and testify against them. The police will protect you. Why don't you let them? They're going to move in and live here every day? Oh, of course not. Then it ain't protection. Now, that's Alice, ridiculous. a man's got to fight his own battles, and I'm fighting this one. I'm driving that truckload of beans into town right now. And that's the story, Jim. What do you think? Well, there's not much doubt about it being a conspiracy to interfere with interstate commerce. No, those trucks cross the state line coming to the market. Now, one thing we need is a witness. Well, this George Wayne might give us a statement. I'll know tonight or in the morning for sure. Neil, who runs the Southern County Produce Company? A man named Eddie Powell. He's got an assistant named Blackie Grant. You mean this whole deal's a two-man operation? Well, so far as we know. Eddie Powell. Powell. You know, I'm pretty sure Roy Fergus had somebody with that name working for him. Well, Fergus moved up near Gatesville not long ago. Oh? Hey, maybe there's a connection. But Jim, he bought himself a big place up there and... Well, from what I hear, all he does is putter around his garden. Neil, men like Fergus never really quit as long as there's an easy dollar laying around. Tell me, how long you be in town? I'm catching the 410 back to Gatesville. Well, I can't be rid of that quick, so you go ahead, huh? I'll see you up there first thing in the morning. Yes, buddy? Mom, some men are here. Where? Outside in the shed. They're acting real funny. They're spilling stuff on the beans. Smells like kerosene. Did they see you? No, and I don't know who they are. Come on, but... show them to me. Okay. There are two of them. One's got a small mustache, and the other's a big... Easy. Huh? Let's move up on them slowly. I'll fight them if you want, Mom. Yeah. I'm not afraid. I can handle this. There. There they are. The same one. Who are they, Mom? I'll tell you later. But who are they? Over here, too, buddy. There's more kerosene in them. We won't need it. Get some of my niche bags on here, okay? Come on, sir. We'll have a new customer tomorrow. Yeah. What are you men doing? Oh, hello, lady. I'd like an answer. What are you doing? A little convincing. That's kerosene. You don't say. You get off this property. Blackie, a little more on these bags. Okay. Stop that. Shut up. Hey, don't talk to my mother like that. Buddy. Why, you little... Buddy. Don't try to yell. Hold her a minute, Blackie, while I light up the place. <laughs> All right, come on. <laughs> We 
will return shortly to tonight's case from the official files of your FBI. Now for a moment, let's consider an entirely different type of case. One which shows how ambitious men can get ahead under our American system of free enterprise. The case of Bob Lawrence. When Bob graduated from high school, he got a job in the plant where his dad has been working for years. Bob worked hard and promotion followed promotion. Until last week, he was made assistant plant manager. Bob has gone far, but he's still planning to go farther. Right, Bob? Well, here's hoping, Mr. Keating. A few years back, Bob had a talk with his Equitable Society representative. Bob was surprised to learn that Equitable had created a special type of life insurance for people of his type. It's known as the Equitable Plan for men and women on the way up. And it's designed to order for all you people, regardless of your present age, who expect to be holding better jobs and earning more money in the years to come. Now, just how does it differ from other life insurance plans? In the first place, it's flexible, can expand or contract. When your income goes up, your insurance can keep pace. In short, this plan is geared to your future success. I got a nice promotion last year. One of the first moves I made was to take advantage of one of the options of my equitable plan. It's the kind of insurance I'd always wanted to have but couldn't afford until then. The second big advantage in this equitable plan is this. Until your salary does go up, the cost of this plan can be kept exceptionally low. Yet your family gets the life insurance protection they need. Well, it made a lot of sense to me, keeping my insurance costs low till I could afford to pay more. That way, life insurance never was a burden. Why not profit by Bob Lawrence's example? Ask your Equitable Society representative for full details of the Equitable Plan for men and women on the way up. Or send a postcard care of this station to the Equitable Society. That's E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. -E. The Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. <laughs> Now back to the FBI file, The Soybean Shakedown. The criminal conspiracy exhibited in tonight's case is not unique in FBI experience. Similar situations exist today in other parts of the country. In case after case, the victims make the same mistake. Like George Wayne, they fail to recognize that there is nothing a criminal fears more than being reported to the authorities. That most criminals, in spite of their big talk and bold threats, are cowards at heart. If George Wayne had faced the issue squarely, had cooperated with the state police, he might have saved himself, his niece, and her son much hardship. Tonight's FBI file continues the following morning inside the state police barracks near Gatesville. Special Agent Taylor has just arrived to meet Trooper Neil York. Hi, Neil. Jim, I'm glad you're here. This case has gotten complicated. Why? What's happening? When I first learned this morning there had been a fire last night at George Wayne's farm. Huh? Went out to check on it and found that the shed had burned down. I went to the farmhouse. The front door was wide open. There was no one there. Uh -huh. I checked with the neighbor. Could he help? I learned that Mr. Wayne had driven a load of beans into the city last night. What about Alice Dawson and her son? Well, the, the neighbor said he saw a car come barreling out of the place right after the shed started burning. Uh. Alice and her son were in the back seat. Who was driving? He said there were two men in front, but he couldn't identify them. How about the car? Well, he just described it as a dark sedan. Yeah. Now, have you gotten any report on how the shed caught fire? Yeah, yeah. The fire department said it had been doused with kerosene. Ah. When will Wayne be back from the city, Neil? Sometime today. If that was Powell and Grant driving the car, we could be up against the added feature of kidnapping. I know. Come on, Neil, let's drive out to that farm. Here, chip, 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 Roy. chip, 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 yeah? What now? Well, we went out to that guy Wayne's place, started to burn the shed when a dame and her kid came out. He started yelling, so we had to take them with us. Mm-hmm. What do you mean? We put them in the car and hauled them away. Oh, that was brilliant. Where are they now? In the warehouse. 
Blackie with him? Yeah. Are uh, either of them hurt? No. What should we do with them, Roy? Well, now, wait a minute. Let's see. If they get loose, they'll make trouble. Well, uh, let the mother go. She'll run right to the law. No, not if you keep the kid. You tell her the boy will go free if she doesn't rumble to the law. Yeah? You keep an eye on her after you let her go. If she keeps her bargain, return the kid. Well, suppose she don't. Eddie, do I have to spell everything out for you? Well, no, but I... Tell her if she goes to the law, she gets the kid back anyway. Only in different shape. Here, chick, 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 chick. Alice, where have you been? What's happened around here? I'm... Uncle George. Oh, now. Now then, now, Alice. Now, all right, now. All right, now, tell me. What's been going on? I come home, no one's here. The shed's burned down. They did it. Those men. Powell and Grant? Yes. And they've got Buddy. What are you talking about? They came here last night. We tried to stop them. They took us both away with them. And they let me go. Why'd they keep the boy? To stop me from calling the police. Where'd they got him? In a warehouse. Where? Just over the state line. They're not stopping you from calling the police. Come on. No, wait, we can't. Why? If we call the police, they said they'd kill Buddy. <laughs> I'll get it, Uncle George. Alice. Hello, Neil. What are you doing here? I told you I was staying with Bud's uncle. Well, Mrs. Dawson, we heard you were kidnapped. What? Oh, sorry, Alice. This is Agent Taylor of the FBI. How are you, Mrs. Dawson? Hello. Oh, please come in. Thank Who's you. that, Alice? Go ahead, Neil. It's uh, Neil York. Oh, hello there. Hello, Mr. Wayne. This is Mr. Taylor. How are you, How do you sir? do, Mr. Taylor? Uncle George, they heard I was kidnapped. Huh? Mr. Dawson, do you mind if we ask you a few questions? Of course not. Or did you leave here last night in a car with two men? No. Alice, you weren't here last night. I... Oh, yes, I uh, took Uncle George's jalopy into the village. Buddy wrote his father a letter, and he wanted to mail it at the post office. Hmm. Were you here when the shed was burned? No. Tell me, why, why are you asking me all this? We're trying to get some information. Mr. Wayne, maybe you can help us. Glad to, if I can. I understand you've been threatened by Eddie Powell and warned against running your own truck. Powell? Who's he? Well, don't you know, sir? Can't recall by the name. Alice told me yesterday two men came out here and threatened you. If it wasn't Powell and Grant, who was it? Alice, you tell him that? Yes, I did, but I guess I was mistaken. Mr. Wayne, if you're not talking because you're afraid, the police will give you protection. Like some protection against them crows. Been eating my beans right Neil, off. Neil, we're not getting anything here. Come on, let's get back to your place. Jim, did you re interview Wayne's neighbor? Yeah. He says Alice Dawson was definitely in the back seat with the boy. I don't understand this. Well, maybe Paul's got her scared, too. How about picking him up? On what charge, Neil? Conspiracy, kidnapping, anything. We know he's guilty. You can't get a warrant without proof. Well, let's go question Roy Fergus. I did that often enough in the old days. I'll tell you what he'll give us. His name and address. And if we want anything else, he'll demand we arrest him or leave. Talk about your iron curtains. Oh, wait a minute, Neil. When's the mail delivered out of Wayne's farm? Around 10.30. Why? There is an overseas airmail on the table addressed to Buddy Dawson. Must have been from his dad. It was unopened. We didn't get there until just before noon. That means the boy hadn't seen it yet. Now, you said something about it raining up here last night? That's right. Well, there are only two sets of footprints in the dirt out at the farm. Both of them were headed into the house. I don't see what you're getting at, Jim. Well, don't you see? Nobody left the place this morning yet. Do you remember how the table was set? No. For two, which would be Mrs. Dawson and George Wayne. Now, if Paul was holding the boy, neither of them would be very likely to talk. Yeah. But still, how do we prove it without their help? 
Let's take a chance on something. If I call Mrs. Dawson and tell her that I'm wanted. Blackie. I'm over here. Where's the kid? Back of them bales. Been crying all morning. Finally went to sleep. Better wake him up. So he can cry again? No, we're taking him out of here. You mean we're letting him go? No, we're moving him into town. How come? State cop went to see his mother after she got back to the farm. I called Roy, told him about it, and he said the kid should be moved. Okay. Wait. Who's that? Mrs. Dawson. Kid's mother. What do you want? Came to get my son. He ain't here. But you told me to come here. He told you? Yes, he just called me. You're a liar. I talked to you less than an hour ago. Something phony about this. Grab her, Blackie. What? Hold it, both of you. Huh? I got him covered, Jim. Neil, how Mrs. did you... Mr. Dawson will explain everything on the way down to headquarters. <laughs> Fergus, Eddie Powell, and Blackie Grant were convicted of kidnapping. Each was given a sentence of life in the federal penitentiary. Special Agent Taylor knew if his theory about the boys still being held captive was true. The only person who might lead them to the hideout was Mrs. Dawson. Calling her, he said he was Eddie Powell and told her to come and pick up her son. It was then a simple matter to follow George Wayne's car to the warehouse. And so another case from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation was closed. During the search of the warehouse following Powell and Grant's arrest, evidence was found which linked the allegedly retired Roy Fergus to the shakedown racket. Enough evidence to convict him along with his hired hoodlums. Other gangs still operate, though. They, too, must be broken up. Your FBI tells you how they can be smashed. And with your cooperation, they will be. quick closing message on the equitable plan for men and women on the way up. The Equitable Society created this plan for a very special type of person. For the man who's looking forward to the day when he can tell his wife, Mary, I'll be making 25% more money this year than last. We're sitting pretty. Are you that kind of man? Then don't wait another day. Ask your Equitable Society representative to work out your own personal plan for a man on the way up. Or send a postcard care of this station to the Equitable Life Assurance Society. Next week, we will dramatize another case from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Its subject, armed robbery. Its title, The Runaway Sister. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of places or persons, living or dead, is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner. The author was Jerry D. Lewis. Your narrator was William Woodson, and Special Agent Taylor was played by Stacey Harris. Others in the cast were Herbert Butterfield, Walter Catlett, Herbert Ellis, Kenneth Peters, Richard Reeves, Jeffrey Silver, and Peggy Weber. This is your FBI is a Jerry Devine production. This is Larry Keating speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community and inviting you to tune in again next week at this same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society will bring you another thrilling transcribed story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The Runaway Sister on This Is Your FBI. Stay tuned for the adventures of Ozzie and Harriet. There's fun for the whole family when Ozzie and Harriet come your way next. This program came to you from Hollywood.